Something that's always fun to me when looking at old Angel Fire websites is seeing one that was clearly only ever intended to be seen by the creator's small circle of friends. And I think that's the case with one of these Save by the Bell websites that I came across recently. And on top of that, I also found out that Steve Urkel was supposed to be in Save by the Bell. And don't forget that if you want to be involved the next time I record an Angel Fire Adventures, follow me at twitch.tv slash Justin Wang. And if you like this type of investigation, you might be interested in a collaboration that I have going on with Kraken Rum. If you're over 21, click the link in the description to join Kraken's League of Darkness. Later on in the week, I'll be sending out a mission that has you taking on this kind of investigation. Anyway, Angel Fire Adventures Episode 2, let's do it. Let's start off with the basics. Saved by the Bell Angel Fire. See, here's the thing that I've realized, like, kind of, like, looking at a lot of these websites. What happens is they kind of, they serve as a little bit of, like, a Wikipedia before Wikipedia existed. Many new viewers of Saved by the Bell are confused by the changing characters in various settings for Saved by the Bell. First major continuity lapse is easily understandable once knows once one knows the history of the show itself. Saved by the Bell did not begin its run as Saved by the Bell, nor did most of its first season air on NBC. Saved by the Bell first began as a pilot for NBC, and the name of the show was Good Morning Miss Bliss, GMMB for short. The GMMB pilot did air on NBC back in 1987. It aired in the Facts of Life's time slot. The pilot for GMMB did not have any of the cast to Saved by the Bell, or even any of the later cast of Good Morning Miss Bliss. Instead, the pilot starred Haley Mills, Brian Austin Green of Beverly Hills 90210 fame, and Jaleel White of Family Matters. Wait, what? I don't remember Jaleel White being on this. Is that accurate? Holy shit. There, there's the, uh, there's Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Alright, so that's, uh, we've uncovered a little something here. I had no idea that Urkel was originally supposed to be in Saved by the Bell. Who would have, who would Urkel have been if, uh, Jaleel White was tied up with his Saved by the Bell obligations? That's a timeline that exists out in the world somewhere. We gotta get Joe Rogan on the case. I feel like Maria's Saved by the Bell site is, it's a little too nice of a website for our purposes. I, I feel like what we really need right now is to look at some shitty fucking websites. Zach Morris fan page Angel Fire. Oh, he hell yeah, this is gonna be a shitty website. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Now, you see what's interesting about these kinds of websites to me? From this period of time, you don't really have Wikipedia or any of these episode guides like you do now. So when people make a website like this, they're just doing it all, all off the top of their head. Well, it didn't even occur to me that this is all... All caps. I don't know if I have it in me to like blow through all of this. Like, it's basically just like pure like statements of facts about things that happen to them. Let's see what else they have here. All right, back to back to eating my fuck. Oh, it's gone. You see what what is another advantage of usually browsing these old uh, Angel Fire pages is that a lot of times you'll come across an old page, even something on Internet Archive. And you'll click on links and they're just old dead links, even like, just like you'll have a whole section of a site that's not archived. But anything that was over here, I'm assuming that this is something that was just like, it was always a bad link. Because that's usually how it goes. Today we let Slater up to the plate. I think that I share a completely different, uh, different opinion than most people in Slater. I know that Brady and I disagree. Who's Brady? I guess Brady is his friend. <laughs> oh my, you know what? It's very likely, actually, with these kinds of pages, that it was only ever intended to be seen by a small amount of people. So, like, Brady is his friend that he made the site, or, like, another person on here. But they disagree on Brady, as you'll see when you read my take on him. Oh, we gotta get this, uh, caption here. Dipples to, like, totally die for. Dipples. Slater was a complex character. He was busy juggling his massive athletic potential. With his blatant homosexuality, that's fucking right, I said it. Slater was gay. He was the first gay character on Saturday morning TV. Trust me, it all pans out in the end. Alright, I'm... I'm so glad that I decided to stick with this website. What was Slater's favorite sport? That's right, 
wrestling, just putting it out there. Slater had a pet lizard, Artie. Well, that little fucker died, and Slater got all deep on us. I mean, come on. Slater wanted to be a cook. Till everyone started calling him, uh, word up will get me for banned from Twitch if I say it out loud, probably. He also took ballet, which he wasn't afraid to dance around in his tights all. Let me tell you something, ballet for dudes isn't tight. <laughs> Having a hard time accepting the obvious truth, huh? How about this little gem? He was under tremendous pressure from his father to succeed. Slater hated his dad so much at what is the most perfect thing to do to piss off your parents? That's right, be gay. <laughs> Slater's dad was in the military, so you know he had a very view, very strict view on it, see? <laughs> oh god. I do, however, distinctly remember several episodes in which Slater wore nothing but his wrestling getup or a towel. He was always in the locker room, too, by the way, probably checking out all the <laughs> cock in there. Alright, now reading this, now I'm thinking that 100% the guy who made this website just like made the uh, Slater is gay rant to piss off his friend Brady. Let's see what he's got to say about Jesse. Jesse holds a special place in all of our hearts for one simple reason. Showgirls! Jesse was the one person on the show who actually had a serious opinion on something. Whether it be from drilling oil, to saving the trees, to drinking too much Jägermeister, and sleeping with the Valley football team, she voiced hers. This led to one problem that she talked a lot more than she should. <laughs> years later, she got it right. Shut up and let us see what we wanted to see all those years. God bless her some more. So anyways, back to the point. Jessie basically was a psycho waiting to explode. Let's just think back to when she was singing in Hot Sunday. I got totally hooked on caffeine pills. We all remember when Zack found her sleeping, and then she tried to take a pill and started singing and crying at the same time. The E! True Hollywood Story made sure they showed that part, because it was hands down one of the greatest moments on the show. So Jessie was totally smacked out on the show. She used to have the fucking most strangest dreams, which led me to believe that caffeine pills weren't the only thing she was taking. She was obviously on shrooms or acid. Jessie was involved with Slater. Whether it was to help his alibi, or she liked using a strap on him, strap on on him as well, we'll never really know. She did have a little thing with Brett, the midget that Lisa hooked him up with. Brady's take on Jesse Spano. Jesse was hot, but she was a big time head case. She came with too much baggage. She had nice legs, decent fashion sense, and nice hair. She did have a little horse face. Jesse was pretty smart too, so that's another plus. The biggest draw to Jessie for me is the fact that she used to bump caffeine pills. Everyone made such a big deal out of that, I thought it was tight. I mean, that's what I like to do in my spare time. <laughs> Let's look at Screech now. First of all, Screech didn't really bother me like most people. In fact, half the time I never even noticed he was there. Some people might say that every time Screech talked, it was like someone running their fingernails down a chalkboard. But he's aight. In my book, his love life was damn near non-existent. He was constantly trying to get into Lisa's panties, but she didn't want to know. At first, I thought it was the whole black-white thing, but that was soon cleared up once she rammed her tongue down Zack's throat and most likely gave him a smoke down by the willow trees. I... I've never heard the phrase, a smoke down. I'm assuming it's a blowjob or something. Is that the whole, like, a smoke down by the willow tree? Is that the whole phrase, or is it like, the... <laughs> Screech tried hard, though, and only gave up when he met Violet Bickersnaff. I remember Violet. Violet was a perfect Screech. Played by Tori Spelling before she got soccer balls put in her chest. Now it's time for Brady's take. Screech was okay. I didn't love him, and I didn't hate him. He tried too hard when it came to Lisa. I mean, he had a nice piece of tail and violet all over him, yet he still pined over Lisa. Great chess player and one hell of a mascot. I lost a lot of respect for him when he subjected himself to save by the bell, the new class. However, I gained a lot more respect for him after he beat the dog piss out of Horse Shack in Celebrity Boxing 2. What? Wait, so was that like an actual boxing? The Legend of Screech vs. Horshack. Wait, so this is Dustin Diamond did a boxing match. 
Damn. Oh. 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 Fuck. Dustin Diamond's wrecking this dude. Yo. Dustin Diamond is fucking dominating this guy. What the hell's going on? Oh yeah, Pineclaw. Of course I know he made a porno. That was, uh... I definitely made reference to that in my YTMND video with DustinDiamond.com. Looks like it's time to dissect Kelly now. What the fuck is up with that hair? Kelly had obvious issues at home, which led to her being very manipulative and having the conversation skills of Helen Keller. In the end, though, she always came back to Zack. No matter how many times she strayed away from a, for a touch of something new, she always realized that Zack was indeed God. She'd come back to, me, to she'd come back to him, kiss him on the cheek, which in the Saved by the Bell universe is equal to about 10 hours of steamy, steamy, hardcore fucking. Brady's take on Kelly Kapowski. Kelly was a pretty hot chick. She was a cock tease, though. She had the reverse Winnie Cooper thing going on, though. What I mean by that is, Winnie was looking good way back in the day, in the early Wonder Year seasons. As she got older, the more she started to slip, she is all... <laughs> She is awful now, and I wouldn't bang her if I were Jesse Monroe. However, Kelly has gotten hotter as the years have gone on. She is looking better than ever on that show Fastlane. So, bottom line is, I would have done Kelly any day in high school. I think these guys, back when this uh, website was made, they're still, still a little hopped up on that showgirls buzz. Last one of the main cast, Lisa. She could play a mean fucking bass, though and was part of the tightest rhythm section in any band, along with Slater. Her voice also goes unmentioned, but those of us who remember the Zack attack know damn right that she could hit the high notes. Same episode, she was Lethal Lisa, in the future. So weak. Lisa got ridiculously hot after the show, and even Martin Lawrence tried to get him some. Bell <laughs> she was overshadowed by Kelly and Jesse in most of the episodes. Saved by the Bell hotness rating from 1 to 10. 7. She was a little boring to me, but still hot for a black chick. I knew I knew somewhere they were gonna go there. I was just waiting for one and it had to come at the very end.